Sitting on the grid in my 2017 Holden V8 supercar, surrounded by Lamborghinis, Ferraris and Audi R8s, I have to concede I'm feeling a little underqualified. Forza Motorsports Online Multiplayer Spec Racing should technically place all these cars on a level field, but I can't help but feel like I've brought a cricket bat to a sword fight here. Several mediocre laps later and neither myself or my Vegemite eating VF Commodore have troubled the timesheets much, finishing mid-pack, one spot below where I qualified. But I'm sweating and I'm smiling. The 2023 version of Futsa Motorsport is brimming with impressive new features across the board, from its muscular new multiplayer to its much improved handling. All except for its upgrades, that is. They've been downgraded. Confused? Me too. Forza Motorsport is, by a significant margin, the best feeling game in the Motorsport franchise to date. If the previous game, Forza Motorsport 7, has any noticeable handling blemishes, it'd be that there's often a lack of bite to the feeling of grip. Six years later, that's totally gone here in this follow-up. The feeling of grip in Forza Motorsport is far more pronounced and authentic, and cars feel more realistically rooted to the road than they ever have previously. Push beyond the capacity of your tyres and grip will now taper away instead of falling off a cliff, meaning cars squirm more and skate less, which is a great improvement. The pleasing side effect of these terrific tyre modelling improvements goes beyond making racing feel more accurate. It also actually makes it feel easier to drive fast. Easy is too often used as a pejorative in a gaming context, but with respect to those who can't feel feelings until they're being flayed alive by a FromSoft game, in racing terms I can assure you it's not a contemptuous concept. Gamepad handling is extremely well refined. As usual, the team at Turn 10 has struck a terrific balance between softening things like rapid weight transfer and certain steering inputs to keep the handling tameable on a tiny analog stick, but still demanding an indisputable deftness to drive consistently fast. On a wheel, my experience is limited to the Thrustmaster TSXW Racer, but it definitely errs extremely heavy out of the box. The last time my actual car felt this heavy to pilot, it was because my alternator failed and killed my power steering. It is, however, extremely tunable, so I was able to eventually dial that aggressive heaviness out and enjoy what I otherwise consider the best Forza Motorsport wheel feel I've ever experienced. There are some small welcome touches for wheel users too. Those who play in cabin view with the wheel visible may be happy to see that the steering animation is no longer locked to just 90 degrees in either direction. The on-screen wheel now rotates up to 360 degrees, which is far more realistic. There are also car-specific force feedback and steering lock settings in the tuning menus, making it easier to keep cars feeling right without constantly readjusting the global settings. There's more good news on tuning, including a new layer of suspension settings as well as the ability to add ballast. Adding ballast obviously increases car weight and lowers its performance index overall, but it is automatically distributed throughout the car to bring it closer to a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. Unfortunately, that's currently where the positive news on tuning, or perhaps more specifically customization, largely stops. That's because upgrades are no longer all immediately available for any car by default, like they are in Forza Motorsport 7 or Forza Horizon 5. Instead, they're frugally rationed out in the same order for each car as you spend seat time in them and earn experience for that specific vehicle. They're also no longer purchased with credits either. Instead, each car will accumulate car points as you level it up that applying upgrades eats away at. By design, this overtly RPG-style approach is meant to encourage us to form more profound connections with a narrower assortment of cars. In practice, however, it's just a bit bothersome. Sure, at car level 50 with the full range of parts available, the upgrade system in Forza Motorsport is essentially the same as it's been for generations. The problem is getting there now is an unexpected treadmill for every individual car. I do appreciate Forza Motorsport's built not bought philosophy, but the new layer of gamification here isn't really for me. 
What I don't really get is the concept of gating away upgrades in a strict order, especially the super straightforward ones. Why do we really need a certain car level before we can remove the spare wheel to shave some kilos? Fortunately, you will earn car levels anywhere you use them, whether that's career mode, free play, or multiplayer, so you're never spinning your wheels on progression as long as you're driving. The career mode is made up of several tiers of themed racing events that are otherwise fairly typically categorized by car class for this type of racing sim. With compulsory practice sessions ahead of each race, it takes quite some time to move through each tour, so I've been busy for a while and will continue to be for some time. The ability to select your specific place on the grid before each event may seem like a peculiar replacement for qualifying, but it does mean that you can have the exact racing experience you want each race, and it's a more robust single-player racing experience than the likes of GT7 as a result. That said, I have found the event intros a little overblown. There's a hushed reverence to them that car manufacturers probably love. Uh, they're a little stiff and starchy compared to the more casual automotive culture shows I stream or watch on YouTube these days. Instant turbo response. And yet they still retain their practical layout and substantial cargo space. There are also a few car categories that don't really seem to get much of a run in the career mode. In the meantime, free play is still here where you can do quick races in any of the 500 available cars. But again, I'd really love some simple options to better curate what the AI drives against me. There are so many specific fields to edit to narrow down your opponent's cars, but it's all but impossible to get the 23 specific rival cars you want. Just let us place the AI in cars we choose, like Forza Motorsport 4 did. Forza Motorsport's 500 car roster is slimmer than Forza Motorsport 7 and Forza Horizon 5, both of which feature over 700 apiece. There's been pruning when it comes to off-roaders, and hot pickups like the GMC Cyclone and the HSV Malou appear to have been collateral damage. Lancia is MIA despite making a welcome return to Horizon 5 just last month. You could pick at the seams for some time. But to be fair, Forza Motorsport does achieve this 500 car figure without the cheeky level of double, triple and sometimes quadruple dipping some of its rivals do when it comes to counting models multiple times due to different paint jobs. It really still is an enviable roster of rides. And there's no shortcut to buy them with obscene amounts of real world money. Pay attention Gran Turismo 7. They also look sharp and marvellous in motion. I played largely in performance RT mode on the Xbox Series X, which adds ray-traced reflections of other cars and nearby objects to the glossy surfaces of your vehicle at the cost of resolution, but not frame rate, which never budged from 60 frames per second. If you favour 4K above all else, performance mode drops ray-tracing during racing, but still runs at a resolute 60 frames per second. A third mode packs in additional ray tracing on other environmental objects but runs at 30 frames per second. But hey, don't scoff, so does Drive Club, and look at how well the aesthetics of that have stood the test of time, even a decade later. It ultimately may come down to personal preference, and I don't know whether overall Forza Motorsport quite has the measure of GT7, but damned if it doesn't look particularly spectacular at midnight under heavy rain. Each of Forza Motorsport's 20 track locations features support for dynamic time of day and variable weather, and they definitely have been dressed with more detail than ever before, with 3D crowds and more trackside objects and fixtures. It is a slimmer selection than the 30 plus locations we had in Forza Motorsport 7, although it has been confirmed further tracks will be injected in the future for free. Still, no Bathurst right now? That bath hurts. Equally painful is the lack of two-player split-screen, which is a mode my kids and I have traditionally had a massive soft spot for. I presume split-screen is simply a niche mode in 2023, and it probably comes at too high a performance cost on the Series S, but it really is a little gloomy whenever gaming seems to go backwards. Hell, Gran Turismo had split-screen in 1997. The trade-off here is a massively improved online multiplayer component 
with scheduled racing events packaged up as full race weekends with a practice session, a three lap qualifying blast and a race. There's spec racing where all the cars are automatically tuned identically by turn 10 for an even playing field and open racing where you take your own builds. I've been playing the Touring Car and GT Spec Racing Series over the past week and it's been extremely robust and reliable. It's a little hard to predict just how civilized it'll remain after launch, but the safety rating should hopefully keep dirty racers away from clean ones. I also don't think I've been on the receiving end of enough bad collisions to gauge just how effective the improved penalties are in actually disciplining the right players effectively, but I've had some great clean races so far. There is currently something amiss with multiplayer replays though. After six long years, Forza Motorsport is off the lift and back in our lives. It looks great, feels great, sounds great, and it's brought with it the most impressive multiplayer we've seen in the series so far. With 500 cars and 20 track locations, it's hardly a small start, but now positioned as a platform, Forza Motorsport has the potential to expand into a seriously rich racing destination over the coming years. If Flight Simulator on four wheels is the plan, I'm here for it. First on the list of improvements Turn 10 should focus on is revamping this new RPG-inspired upgrade system that turns progression into an unnecessarily long road ahead for each individual car, and maybe bringing back the joys of split-screen multiplayer racing to complement the excellent online modes. For more automotive magic, check out our review of the Crew Motorfest and the first glimpse of next month's EA Sports WRC. And for the future of Forza Motorsport and everything else, Keep riding with IGN.